Hey guys, it's me, Brianna, and um, I know I'm coming to you guys with no makeup on, and here I am, have a beauty channel. But I just wanted to talk about something that's really, you know, close to my heart, and it is suffering in silence. Um, Too many of us suffer in silence. Just to let you guys know, um, just a little back history, a few years ago, I almost died. Um, I was bit by a brown recluse spider and it got in my bloodstream and it had an effect on me to where my body started to shut down. I went into shock. Um, my body started to shut down. You know, I was unconscious. It's, I almost died um, a few years ago. And, you know, now when I think about it, after like that ordeal, you know, almost died and I had surgery and I got better, you know, I had all these blood transfusions and you know, I think I think about back then and how I coped with it. I should have went to a psychiatrist. I should have got therapy. I didn't because I was raised to where if you have a problem you pray about it. You always pray about it. You don't you don't go to a therapist. You don't go to a psychiatrist. Are you serious? No. If you have an issue, you go to the Lord about it. You do not tell people your problems. And I think about back then how I coped with it. You know, here I am, a young woman in college, and I almost succumbed to a poisonous spike. And I remember getting out of the hospital. And I remember going to my girlfriend and crying to my girlfriend about how I'll never find a man. Something so ridiculous. I was literally worried about not being able to find a man. Like, and if you know me, that's not my character. I'm one of those women who are so independent, like just so joyfully independent and love my, my independence. So for me to have almost died a week before that and I was crying to my girlfriend about me never being able to find a man. That's what I was focused on. And my girlfriend was like, girl, what is wrong with you? Like, for one, it's completely out of your character. And for two, you almost just died. You're really sitting up here crying at me about not finding a man. But that's how I coped with it. I found the most ridiculous thing I could possibly think of to focus my energy on. Because I was hurting. I was in pain. I was traumatized. And I didn't get help. I should have got help. I didn't get help. I suppressed that memory. Two years later, I graduated from college and I started having extreme panic attacks. I mean, I could not sleep. There was one night I was having panic attacks. It was maybe like 2 o'clock in the morning. I could not breathe. I mean, I couldn't sleep. I just, it was so frightening. And I remember the next day, I told my mom, I said, you know what? I'm going to go. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go seek help. I need to seek help. I cannot. This burden is too heavy for me to carry. And my mom, she was amazing. She said, you know, let's let's do that. I'll split the cost with you. We'll split the cost of you going to see a therapist. And, you know, I had a girlfriend who I told and she was like, girl, you are not white. You do not go to therapists. You pray to the Lord. The Lord is all you need. But it wasn't. You know, I had this heavy burden and it was getting heavier and heavier. And I was stressed and I couldn't cope. So I went to a therapist. I went to a therapist. I talked to a therapist. And it is one of the best decisions I've ever made. One of the best decisions I ever made was going to a therapist when I was hurting. Because she opened up my mind. She opened up a lot of the reasons why I was having panic attacks. A lot of the reasons why I was suffering. A lot of reasons why I was stressed. A lot of reasons why I was gaining so much weight. A lot of the reasons why I was unhappy. A lot of the reasons why I had this burden to carry that was so heavy upon me. She was able to help me with resolutions I did not even know existed. She helped me find ways to cope. And I think it's important that in the black community, it's so taboo to go to a therapist or go to a psychiatrist. If you go seek help, you're not crazy. You are not crazy if you go to a therapist. You are not weak if you go to a therapist. You are not unreligious if you go to a therapist. That has nothing to do with you. You going to see a therapist is not your identity. Going to a therapist is not a sign of weak. It's a sign of strength. It is a sign that you were suffering internally and you took these steps you had to take to get help, to seek assistance. It's so easy to suffer in silence. 
I feel like, especially black women, we suffer in silence. We've always suffered in silence. We've always. It's time to break that chain. If you are suffering, seek help. Please seek help. If you have a burden that's too heavy to carry, seek help. If you are dealing with a tragedy or you're dealing with the death, baby, seek help. If you are stressed because you can't find a job or like me, you have a near-death experience, seek help. Do not suffer in silence. Do not suffer in silence. We should trust in the Lord and we know that, you know, the Lord has our back. But God has given us other ways. He, he has, that's like someone who's sick and someone's saying, oh, girl, don't take that medicine. You know, just pray about it. God put that medicine here to make you get better. You know, there are people out here to speak to. God has a way of showing us. God has given us ways to deal with this. We should not have to deal with anything in silence. We should not. You should not have to. Do not feel bad for speaking up. Even if you just need an ear to talk to. Or just someone to hear you. Baby, seek help. Please, please, please seek help. A co-worker of mine today, he passed away. You know, very young guy. Very nice guy. Um, he passed away from a heart attack. And... You know, um, they were saying, you know, there's, there's therapists downstairs, and I know someone who was like, therapist, you know, oh, we don't do therapists, but coming from somebody who has truly been depressed, and depression is real, um, seek help, and more importantly, do not think it's a sign of weakness to seek help. And if you have someone who is suffering or is depressed or just stressed or just if you have somebody who is just dealing with a lot please encourage them to to get help you know it's I get that you know pray to the Lord about your problems I'm pray to the Lord pray to the Lord but do not hold it inside do not bottle it up inside until it becomes unbearable until it kills you you know suicide among black women is increasing every single year it increased by six percent last year it is a taboo for us to get help so we ball it all in until we cannot cope anymore seek help please 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 seek help um i provided some links down below some hotline numbers if you are dealing with anything or if you can't afford to go to a therapist or psychiatrist i did provide some crisis hotline numbers down below for you guys to talk to i know this is kind of out of the norm for me you know this is a beauty channel but this is something that I really just wanted to put out there for you guys because I've been there. I know how it is to suffer. I know how it is to be in pain. I almost died. I had a near-death experience. I felt I, my body went into shock. I felt my body closing down. Like, I almost died, you guys. And I was so traumatized by it. And I coped with it in such an odd way. I worried about the most superficial things to try to cope with me almost dying. I wish I I wish I had sought help then. I wish I didn't feel like, you know, oh, me reaching out is bad. It's not bad. It's not a bad thing. Talk to you guys later. You guys have an absolutely amazing day. Um, I love you guys so much. We, we're amazing. I absolutely love you guys. My family. Please seek help. I'll continue to pray for you and talk to you guys later. Bye.